Castlevania Bloodlines, also known in lovely old England and the rest of the EU as Castlevania, the new generation, which is the most, isn't that just the most early 90s like tagline to have? The new generation is like a Pepsi advert, you know, <laughs> or like the shitty spin-off, you know, when they lose all the actors in like a sitcom or something. Oh no, we got a new bunch of new actors. It's saved by the bell. The new generation. Ooh, ooh, that's a bad the show. new class. Like a Rob no, you can't you can't replace Screech, you fucker. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I'd say Bloodlines is the better title because it's reflective of the game, which is full of lots of blood and gore because and this is probably the most adult Castlevania has, has been at this point, I'd argue. Yeah, it's it's classic Mega Drive Genesis idea of, you know, we need the edgier Castlevania. We need one that has blood and guts to make us look like the adult of the two. Yeah, and to my knowledge, this is the only Castlevania to ever have come to a Sega system. I, I guess there were ports yeah. of like, I think Symphony and yeah, Symphony of the Night got ported yeah, to the Saturn. Saturn. But other than that, like, Castlevania's kind of just predominantly been a Nintendo thing. And until the PlayStation. Until the PlayStation, where Symphony of the Night was the best thing ever. Notable things, I guess, to make about this game outside of the adult, the, the more adult orientated Mega Drive edginess. <laughs> it threw in a bunch of Bram Stoker novel stuff. They just have characters from the novel, and I think one of the bad guys is, like, from the novel. I don't really know, but it's kind of weird that now, in the lore of Castlevania, all the stuff that happened in Bram Stoker is supposed to be canon. I think it was actually always be canon. But then, like, but they treat Dracula like he's a completely different thing to then, like... Well, Dracula never went to England beforehand. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, who knows? Argue in the comments about <laughs> the legitimacy of the Bram Stoker novels. <laughs> Not unlike Rondo of Blood or uh, Dracula's Curse, you can play as multiple characters and you're going to want to because you have between John Morris, I think it's John Morris or Jonathan yeah, Morris, John Morris I think that's it. or Eric Lacard who everyone thinks is a girl but isn't a girl because it's just the androgyny thing that Japan really likes to do. I think he looks cool personally, but maybe that's Try just me. Cool, man. But yeah, uh, basically, long story short, John is your standard Belmont flavoured whip boy, and then Eric has a trident spear and is just the better character because his spear has godlike reach and he has this super cool jump pole vault move Army direct thing. Attacking. Yeah, he just, he is the better bet and you're going to want to pick him because this game's difficulty is off the chain. <laughs> it's just, um, I don't know, again, it feels like every game following those after the NES games is trying constantly to one-up that difficulty or find that find that magic formula and they they were all I all either like too easy or too difficult I guess that would be the same thing here it, it's a really inconsistent feeling game in terms of its difficulty curve I'd say do you want me to go uh yeah you you have a lot to say don't you <laughs> oh god he's bringing up the notes right so my problem with the difficulty level is that unlike the previous games where you continue from the last level if you run out of lives this one has a one-and-done approach. When you run out of lives, that's it. you got to start from the start. Unless you want to put in a 16-digit password. Does anyone want to put a 16-digit password in with the Mega Drive controller? Are you kidding me? See, see I was going to go, oh, that's not that bad. And then you said the Mega Drive controller. I was like, okay, you, no, that's a good point. <laughs> it's a 16-image code doesn't give you all your lives back. Like, maybe there's a variation of it that does, but I couldn't find it. As in, like, you don't start with 10 you, lives? No, you or... start with... In my experience, I've started with two or three lives, and I've used online ones, as opposed to, like, the ones I've gotten as well. But hmm. I can't even quick save in this game properly without this being an issue. It's funny you bring up the quick saving, hmm. because I'm pretty certain by this point, games like Sonic the Hedgehog 3 had come out. Yeah, this is 1994. And, like, that game had saving. 
Yeah, well, for some reason, Castlevania doesn't have saving, and my guess is that it's just artificial difficulty. We only have six stages here with two characters, and you can beat the whole game in about an hour if you know what you're doing. But like, if you're that good, if you've spent that much time mastering this game's, like, bullshit moments, then you'll, you'll speed through it. The problem is, this artificial difficulty doesn't feel fair, because unlike previous games where, hey, you get to this stage, you're good to go if you keep playing. You'll always be fine, and we can give you back free lives just to give you a bit more experimental leeway. This game will throw things like auto-scrollers and spiteful pieces of challenge where the game will just give you a sucker punch out of nowhere, and that really reduces the amount of lives you have, which just makes playing the game feel more frustrating than it'd have to be. And now, um, you bring up auto-scrollers mm. th th and the, those sorts of mechanics. They've definitely been around in previous games. I mean, I remember uh, Castlevania 3, you can get, you have like the floor rising and following you or you have like uh castlevania 4 i know there's quite a there is a level where you have to like scroll through again i think it's the rising floor so is it similar to that um i believe it's similar i just feel like the mega drive version is more unpolished because okay there's parts like say for example missions 2 and 3 especially have this where mission 2 has a rising water level that you need to keep going upstairs to get past yeah i remember that actually the problem with it is that if you keep running up the stairs, eventually you're going to get off camera, but you'll still be moving. You kind of want to do that, though, because at times you're going to be having enemies like try and sucker punch you. And also there are certain paths while going up that will lead you into the direction of nowhere. So if you take the wrong left or the wrong right, and obviously when you first do it, you won't know. First time I played the water level scroller, I just sort of sluggishly went through the whole part, didn't die once, and just luckily got to the top and then died to the boss. Then the next three times I did it, I died instantly every time because it's just like a really fumbly, awkward process to platform up against the water speed. Because if you just hit the water a little bit, you're going to lose 70% of your health. And the same with the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa level, where you can kind of accidentally thump it with an enemy just tapping you and you might just fall down a little crack and die. This is where you're losing most of your life. The systems are simple, but you have to be very particular about it and they just don't feel like the controls are all there. You aren't as small as you were in the Castlevania like 3 or 2 or 1. You are a bigger sprite now. Maybe not as big as 4, because I believe 4 kind of minimized its platforming to focus more on action. But Bloodlines really does want you to figure out this action um, platforming set pieces. It really does focus a lot on bottomless pits. I'd say um, in an in an earlier video this week, mm. I bring up that a lot of these games are about pattern memorization and yeah. such like that. I, I feel I could say that like Castlevania still, whenever you were like faced with something, you felt the tools were there to do it. It didn't feel like every situation was completely and utterly unfair. No. And you couldn't... You could always see what you were supposed to do. Yeah. I guess is the best way to put it. I feel a bit like you can memorize the pattern for these stages, but something random, like something glitchy or something with the controls can just sort of put you off slightly, and then you'll just die. You'll beat this stage before, like, easy, but then you start getting frustrated because the game is just not working right. Maybe a random Medusa head in the scroller will just, it will go slightly off pattern and just hit you and knock you off the, the world, or perhaps you'll be doing a jumping on the scroller part where you don't actually think you can fall off, but suddenly an enemy hits you in the right way, and then you just fall to your death. And none of that's fun when you realise, like, alright, I beat the first sub-boss, I've done the scroller, like, three times now, gonna go for, try, and, try and beat the boss once more time, and then you just random scroller death, and then it's game over. Mm. It's not a very fun way to play the game. And because there isn't some of the mechanics from previous games, it just, it feels spiteful. There is stuff in the game that I think is good. The level design, I like the European globe trottingness of it. And I think some of the craft in the level, the attention to detail, things like the water levels, reflections, or the Tower of Pisa's spinny 3D-ness, how they try to make every level that's kind of its own thing. And stuff like the music, like the music is completely gold. Mitru Yamane is one of her first tracks in the Castlevania franchise. Though I believe she mentioned some of that. It was a rushed soundtrack. That, that, she'd... Was, that was rushed? Yeah, I think she was working with a couple other people, but supposedly they didn't have much time, and maybe the whole Bloodlines game was rushed out just to get it gone. And maybe that's why the game's shorter than previous games, and they've thrown all this extra stuff in here to try and elongate it for the customers. But, you know, in 2018, 
that stuff just doesn't really fly. It's a it's a shame because, like you say, the visual, the overall presentation of the game is what I remember the most from it. So you mentioned that Leaning Tower mm. of Pisa stage. Yeah. I remember that stage really well just from how it looks. Or there's that stage where, like, the floor is reflecting. I remember there's a bit as well with, like, a statue head that you, like, whack and then it, like... Yeah, that's in stage two. ...topples over. It all looks really cool. Yeah, it does. Like, it's a cool-looking game. I really appreciate a lot of its elements, but I kind of believe in the end of the day that there are some things that just don't hold up. The, the construction-y clock tower level... Again, it doesn't feel great. It's a bit unfair. Some of the platforming in there is really spiteful. And the boss at the end is like a weird polygon cog man, and he looks ridiculous. Like, it has not aged well. Like, I guess at the time it was probably a cool effect, but now it just looks embarrassing. Like, in what world in a Castlevania game do you want to fight a pile of cogs? I'm trying off the top of my head to think if there was one. You know what the sub-boss in that level is? Frankenstein. A ten-foot Frankenstein. Wait. What? Yeah, I don't the, remember this. In the same level as the cogs. I the, thought that was the opposite way around. <laughs> no, the 10 foot Frankenstein with a whip is the sub boss and a cog man is the final boss. Okay. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> there is nothing bizarre. to say. That's like fighting Dracula before you fight, like... Macula. <laughs> oh wait, no. Wait, no. Symphony of the Night does that. I need to retract that <laughs> statement. Because <laughs> that game's fucking fantastic. <laughs> Bloodlines is not simply the night. It's also not Rondo of Blood. I compare Bloodlines to your shitty douchebag boyfriend, who occasionally he's a, he's a nice guy sometimes. He's got a heart of gold occasionally, but he's such a fucking asshole. But you want it makes it satisfying when you actually get him to work and you're having a good time. But then he kicks you in the dick and you're like, oh, you fucking prick. Why am I with you when I could be with Rondo of Blood? That's someone I'd show my parents. Rondo of Blood. I'd show Rondo of Blood to my parents. <laughs> you gotta think, this game came out at the same time as two other games, Rondo of Blood and Super Castlevania, and I know I'd rather play those two games over Bloodlines, even though Bloodlines has a lot of cool merits, in some ways it hasn't aged as well as the other two. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would say that out of the three sort of 16-bit era Castlevania mm. games. Bloodlines is the one I'm the least interested to go back into playing. Whereas, like, you beat up Super Castlevania 4 or Rondo of Blood and I'm all over it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say if you've got a tolerance for old-school bullshit and you're cool with that, or if you just want to use quick saves every 10 minutes, I'm not really... I'm not huge on the quick saves myself. I'll only use them at the start of a level, and usually, if I'm really feeling it, maybe a boss if I'm just really pissed off. It's really up to the user, the person, if they think Bloodlines is worth giving a go. Yeah, you're basically saying if you want to give the game, if you if you want to play the game, like go for it, but be aware that it could lead to you ripping your Mega Drive apart. Yeah, this is a frustrating Castlevania game. It feels a bit cheaper than the other ones because it uses some some poorly aged old school tactics that don't fly anymore, and that's all I got. I, I think I find it okay, mm. but I don't think it's one that I care about going back and playing. Have an item button is cool, mini bosses are cool, the locations are cool, the music is cool, the art direction can be really cool, but it's still fucking frustrating. But you do get to play as Eric Lacard. Yeah. Oh yeah, Tridents are super cool. <laughs>